Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is ECW. We are here. It is the show of the week, as it always is, and we are off the heels of Guilty as Charge. Without a doubt, one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time. An absolute incredible show from top to bottom. Stacked with so many talents and so much incredible action that you already want to go back and watch it. And I don't blame you, but tonight's episode of ECW in its own right is going to have some pretty interesting matches. We're going to have the new ECW television champion Bobby Roode in action. And he'll be taking on one-on-one -on -one, the runner-up in that battle royal that we had. Also a guilty as charged, Tetsuya Naito. Rude is on the momentum uh, that he has not had in a long, long, long time. As ECW television champion, he is looking to get it off to a head start by defeating Tetsuya Naito here tonight. That one is going to be great to see. It'll be amazing to see what Rude is like with the belt. Then though, we're going to move on. We're going to focus on our main event because Samoa Joe will have the task at hand of welcoming in the new number one contender for the ECW Championship. Samoa Joe, one-on-one -on -one with Drew McIntyre as he prepares for his matchup at the Royal Rumble. Still long over a month from now against Seth Rollins. McIntyre defeated Callahan in an outstanding match of Guilty as Charged to become the number one contender, but now he's got to realize he is destined to meet the greatest wrestler of all time, and we'll see if he can handle the pressure. Before we get to any of that, we're going to start things off with a Cruiserweight matchup. Drago made his debut on ECW, not guilty as charged, and one man made his return, and that was Austin Aries. Those two men will square up right now. And let the show begin, we shall. This one should be a very interesting affair. Um, one thing that we got to take into account, though, with this show is that I announced those two matches, and they look like two pretty big matches. However, we do have some complications, shall we say, with some of the roster. Uh, I will announce right now for a fact, Baron Corbin nor Seth Rollins are here tonight. Both of them picked up injuries in their uh, falls count anywhere that just turned into a fully fledged brawl. Uh, both amassed injuries in that one and both have been given the week off to recover and to get the injuries sorted out if they need to. Um, uh, and that's a promise. I'm not doing that just to say Rollins can attack Drew McIntyre later. You know, you know me. I'm the most honest general manager around. I'm the best general manager around. I wouldn't lie to the people who tune in every week to watch the best show there is. It is a fact that Seth Rollins will not be here. On top of that, AJ Styles nor Shawn Michaels will be here. After losing their ECW Tag Team titles, they have both suffered some strenuous injuries and they would like some time off as well. That has been granted to them. Uh, Sammy Callahan will not be here tonight. He picked up a nasty knock. I think he picked up a mild concussion following his match with Drew McIntyre. Probably all the future shocks and the Claymore kicks doing the job for that one. And uh, the Authors of Pain are not here tonight simply because Paul Ellering did not want them to be here. And neither is Neville because the King of the Cruiserweights has his eyes on what is happening next for his division and believes that after defending the championship at Guilty as Charged, he sees no reason for why he has to be here. So there we go, only one champion is here tonight, and that is Bobby Roode. So we are in for an interesting night of action, we might be in for a little bit of a, I guess, for the most part you could call it a kind of scarce ECW, you know, lacking a lot of big names, but we have the number one contender to the ECW Championship in action in the main event. We have the man who can pick a, a title opportunity whenever he wants to. Uh... Uh, but, 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 uh, for a title of his choosing from now up until the Royal Rumble. And we've also got one half of the number one contenders for the ECW Tag Team titles um, in Roderick Strong in action later on tonight. So that should be a pretty good one. We're going to kick things off, as I said. Cruiserweight division, we're underway here. Drago and Austin Aries. Drago, of course, was in that matchup. Made his ECW debut, and he did come close to winning the Cruiserweight Championship. However, uh, it was not the case for him sadly because it was actually a fairly decent performance from uh, Neville on the night and a group of others as well Drago was not put in the final decision he was not pinned nor submitted that of course went to Jack Gallagher but Drago I imagine still frustrated about not picking up victory so this match will continue on here with both men looking for that win Aries of course has a confirmed 
Title opportunity whenever he wants to go for it. Drago needs to try and get his name back out there. Oh, what a chop in the chest there by a double. And he's going to go up to the top rope here right away. We're going to take some flight maybe. On Drago, drop kick missed it. Drago did good to avoid that one. Sweeps the leg of Aries there. Great to see Aries back in the ECW ring as well. Great to see Aries back in action after being away for so long. Austin Aries rejuvenated, ready to go. And ready to prove that the greatest man that ever lived has not lost a beat. Nice suplex there by, uh, by uh, Drago. Interesting to see what this match is about. Will they go all out early on or will we see a fairly back and forth matchup? Drago in position now. Cross-legged brain buster for Aries to endure. And Aries is going to have to take a, a moment to recover outside of the ring here. Drago going to follow suit and... Aries gets out of the way by retreating up to the top rope. He's now kind of in his own little no man's land, which he manages to recover from very nicely with a double axe handle. Aries now has Drago in his clutches, brings him up and down with a brain buster. Already, he could be looking for the victory here. Cover from, uh, from Aries on Drago, who kicks out at two. Well, Aries is still looking like he's in a... Well, it looks like he, to be fair, he never missed a beat. Looks like he's uh, been in the ring this entire time. And Aries is doing a great job right now of giving Drago a real tough run for his money. Aries going to fly here through the rope with a suicide dive. Look at that. Takes a little extra spring and then between the top and bottom ropes. Absolutely perfect by Aries. Drago down and in trouble here. Aries could already be closing in on a huge win on his return to ECW. I didn't expect Drago to want to perform like this, but Aries is really doing a number. Up to the top rope he goes now. Double axe handle connects again. Will Aries look for it now? Stomp on the head and he's going to lock it in here. Aries, last chancery. Last chancery on Drago. Can Drago get his way out of it? Is this going to be a dominant return to ECW for Austin Aries? Yes, it will be. Drago forced to submit. That is how you return to ECW. Your winner, Austin Aries. What a return for a double. And any champion who thinks that they should, uh, you know, overlook Austin Aries just got proven wrong in a very quick fashion. Look at this after the match. Great bit of respect being shown by both men there. Aries and Drago shaking the hand. And respect earned by both men. Very nice. Very nice to see indeed. Well, there we go. It is victory for Austin Aries anyway. Pulled off what he wanted to. And there is your winner in a very quick fashion here to get things underway on ECW. Well, there we go. We had a bit of a action-packed cruiserweight match to get us underway. Maybe the next cruiserweight match won't be so action-packed. It's coming up next. What could be a strike and a grapple fest between Hideo Itami and Zack Sabre Jr. Well, there we go. We've had an entertaining start to ECW. Let's continue it on here with our next contest. A battle of, uh, well, a hard battle between two hard-fought competitors. And one in its own right that will also be very, uh, about earning respect in their own way. Using their talents to earn respect. As what we'll see in this one as Hideo Itami comes towards the ring here. Should be very interesting to see what um, what will happen uh, in this one. You know, these are, these are two guys who might be classed as a little bit underappreciated maybe in the Cruiserweight division. Maybe I could do a better job of looking after them. They're both fine talents in their own right. But Itami, as of late, if I remember rightly, has been picking up a lot of losses for himself. And... Another one here to Zack Sabre Jr. would not be good for his cause. I don't want to send this guy down to NXT. Uh, but if he continues on these losses, I may find myself in a position where I have no choice but to do that. I guess we'll find out, though, as time goes on. But as for right now, Hideo Itami. Intent on picking up the win here tonight over Zack Sabre Jr. And Zack Sabre Jr., much of the same. Of course, this is, like I said, in a night where if you have a night where there's not a lot of talents in action, you might as well do the very best that you can to make sure that you get your name out there and to make sure that you are 
at the end of it all. Uh, you know, the winner. Because if you're the winner, you're going to get more chances handed to you, you know? If, if, if Austin Erie, uh, not Austin Erie, sorry, if uh, Hideo Itami was able to beat Zack Sabre Jr. in a convincing fashion here tonight, well, I, I would put more attention on him in the Cruiserweight division. If Zack Sabre Jr. was able to defeat Hideo Itami in a convincing fashion, then I would make sure to put more attention on Zack Sabre Jr., which he does deserve to be fair. Sabre Jr. is an incredible talent, but he's just lacking that fire, it seems. He's just lacking that kind of spark under his ass that can light him up and send him on his way. Ever since he made his debut, it just feels as if he's been lingering down here. It is, I think is the easiest way of putting it. It's just not been the Zack Sabre Jr. that we had come to know before he did join this universe, I think is the easiest way of putting it. And Hideo Itami is looking to try and manipulate that maybe in his own way and pick up the win here. We are underway in this matchup, and like I said, expect a bit more uh, technical wrestling, expect some more strikes by both men. Don't expect much in the range of high flying like we just saw with Ares and uh, Drago. And here we go, we are underway, and it has been all Zack Sabre Jr. so far from the get-go, targeting the arm of Hideo Itami. There's the reversal, though, by Itami, turning things around into his favor now. A stomp on the arm there. To get things underway early on. And now Atami can turn this match around in his favor, maybe. Nice gut buster there, all things considered, by Atami. And interesting that he would go after the gut, maybe trying to take away... Maybe trying to win uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Maybe trying to cause some <clears throat> internal injuries. And here we go now, going after the head. Triple kicks into the head. As Atami will look to soften it up for his rendition of the go to sleep. Or the shotgun drop kick, depending on what Atami decides to go for. Targeting the arm now once more, Sabre Jr. Say what you will. Sabre Jr. making sure early on to hone in on the arm as a key target for this matchup. He knows he's got to lock it in if he wants that submission victory. Off the ropes comes Atami. Collision between the two, and Atami will capitalize now. Irish whip off the ropes, and that is a lovely slam there by Atami. Very, very nicely struck there, but Zack Sabre Jr., not one to want to spend much time on the receiving end of a beatdown, turns things around into his favor here once more. Traps the arms in, and a lovely Northern Light suplex is hit there. Zack Sabre Jr. looking pretty good right now, all things considered. He is doing a pretty marvelous job. Taking care of Hideo Itami right about now. But Itami able to pull out the counter. Now what will Hitami look for? He'll go up to the top rope here. Zack Sabre Jr. could find himself in a little bit of trouble maybe. Hideo Itami now from the top. Big time drop kick. You could see the force putting that drop kick by the way. Sabre Jr flew backwards there and this just goes to show you that the cruiserweight division is not all about who can pull off the fanciest flips who can do the you know who can make the who can pull off the most jaw-dropping maneuver sometimes it's about who can hit the hardest who can land the hardest finishing maneuver to put this match away who can cause the most pain Sabre Jr. now arm drag there very nicely executed on uh, Hideo Itami and here comes the Northern Light suplex nails it he didn't get to decide to go for the bridge, and I think that was a smart idea given the fact that he was in the ropes. But this time, he will look to lock this one in. Zack Sabre Jr. got the cross arm breaker in here. Looking to try and make Atami tap out. Will Atami submit? He's done work on the arm, but Atami is just about able to get himself out of it. Nice work there by Atami, keeping his hopes alive. There was so much work done on the arm. Could it take away the GTS? Zack Sabre Jr. with an incredible bit of a agility there to land on his feet and goes to work on the arm immediately once more. And now abandoning it for a moment. Big time power bomb. What will we see now from Sabre Jr. as he continues here to do work on Hideo Itami? Oh! Double, uh, double underhook face buster there or something along those lines. 
That looked like a nasty suplex, all things considered, for Itami to endure. Zack Sabre Jr. into a cover, though it's very late after that maneuver. Doubt he'll put away Itami with it. And there's the, the proof in the pudding. Kick out of two there by Itami once more. Counter by Itami now. Can he get something going here? If he was, Sabre Jr. denied him the opportunity to... And Itami denies him right back. Back and forth reversals by both men. Not too sure he was thinking there. Roll up, but he's in the ropes. Look at how that little roll up there gets Saber Jr. The opening to get offense going once more. And here comes another Northern Light suplex in the ring. But this time he, he doesn't go for the cover again. Will Saber Jr. look for the submission here? Will he look for that cross arm breaker once more? Does he think he's done enough to force the submission here? Going after the arm there. And all of a sudden, Itami is able to turn the match around into his... Uh, well, or turn the match around into his court, maybe. Sabre Jr. missed one potential move there. And uh-oh, on the top rope here, Sabre Jr. looking to fly cross body. Cover right after it. Sabre Jr. looking for the victory here. There's two. And there's three. It does it. Maybe a little uncharacteristic for Zack Sabre Jr. But the cross body finished things off there. Hideo Itami may well have just been too worn out to continue on. But there is your winner, Zack Sabre Jr. What does this mean for Sabre Jr. going forward? Has he earned the respect of the Cruiserweight division? Does this show that he should be given more attention as time goes on? We'll have to wait and find out. But one thing's for certain, a good victory there for Sabre Jr. Though convincing is up for debate. As he didn't really win with his own maneuver. Not to... Uh, break out a very uncharacteristic crossbody to get the win. So we'll see what the uh, opinion is on that one, I guess. But still, a win is a win for Zack Sabre Jr. and he can take that with him out of tonight. We're going to move on though to our next contest. At Guilty as Charged, the four horsemen became the number one contenders and one half of that was Roderick Strong. Tonight, right now, he'll go one-on-one -on -one against Tommaso Ciampa. We've already seen one bit of respect given out to the winner here tonight, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see it again. Strong and Ciampa is going to be for sure a very entertaining match, I believe, between two very entertaining athletes. The question is, though, what, what kind of uh, shape, really, what kind of condition is Roderick Strong in, given what happened to Guilty as Charged? That match went on for some near 20 minutes for the, uh, for the right to become the number one, con the number one contenders for the ECW Tag Team titles. Roddy had to give it absolutely everything for the win, as did Apollo Crews. And of course, remember, they shared the ring with Braun Strowman. That by no means was an easy feat. So, that is something I think that has to be taken into effect. Is Strong at 100%? Did he say he wanted to fight just because he could? Will this be a regretful decision? Because you got to think, look at it from the other side. Tommaso Ciampa, a man hungry for victory each and every week he comes out to you. Hungry for victory every time. Devoting every match to Johnny Gargano, who is going to be on his way back in just a few weeks, actually. But Tommaso Ciampa, ever since Gargano has been gone, has been on a bit of a losing streak. And Gargano, uh, sorry, Ciampa even, has been on a bit of a losing streak. And Ciampa may well try and do whatever it takes here tonight to make sure that he can get his hands on a big time win here tonight. And despite there being a bit of respect, Roddy Strong has tried to get the attention on him right at the start here. Ciampa not a fan of that one. And we are underway. Kind of prematurely here. Bell rings and both these men are going to get this one started. Here we go. Ciampa now unloading away early on. Chops to Roddy Strong. Quickly countered. By oh, backbreaker. Of his own there by Roddy Strong. I think regardless of what we watch here, this one should be a, a very entertaining contest. Good counter there by Ciampa. Interesting to see now what he'll be able to do early on here. Ciampa has Roddy. Another exploder suplex into the corner here on the night. First Aries. And now... Tommaso Ciampa with one. What a feat of strikes there. And Roddy Strong is going to have to take a moment to get outside of the ring. I imagine the head is the weak part of Roddy Strong. Now, I imagine his body, to be fair, has got to be hurting pretty bad as well. And look at how Tommaso Ciampa shows no remorse in the process. Backbreaker on the uh, back, suplex even, on the apron. For him to endure, that is uh, 
A great bit of thinking there by Roddy Strong. Uh, by Tommaso Ciampa even. I'm getting all sorts of names mixed up right now. Once again, this is a great opportunity for both men to get their names out there. Regardless of teams, there's also a singles aspect to it, especially for Ciampa as he waits for Gargano to make his return. Count up to five here and all. Roddy spilling into the crowd there. Ciampa going to make his way back into the ring now. And here we go. Back in the ring he comes now. Took him until the count of seven to get back in, but we are continuing on with this matchup here. And he just got back in the ring, and Roddy's going to return the favour to Ciampa here. Back suplex on the apron of his own, and even lands down on that little uh, LED screen there. And trust me, that is not something that you want to be landing on. That is not going to do you any favours. That is not going to soften any blow for you. On the outside now, Ciampa has him in position. Oh, look at that! On the thin, thin padding on the outside. These two men are going out of here. It's been way more about the outside than it has been. I was expecting a very respectable match by both men, but we have been treated to anything but that. The ring barely been used thus far. Strong pulls out the reversal there and gets a big kick in the gut now. Can he get something going here for, for himself? Nice double underhook suplex. Ciampa taking a bit of time to recover here. He's still reeling from the effects of that one. Strong now brings him in. Back suplex. Ciampa lands it. Oh, and a running clothesline there. Very nicely done there by Tommaso Ciampa. And now Ciampa unloading here. Oh, my goodness. The suplex GTS essentially just busting him in the face. But Strong kicks out at two. Ciampa has been... Got all guns blazing essentially since the moment the bell rung to get this one underway. Maybe that little pre-match antic by Roddy Strong was done so he could amp up Ciampa so he could get the best out of Ciampa. So the inner psycho killer of Tommaso Ciampa would come out to play here. Big time backbreaker there by Strong and once again just slowing down the pace a little bit. Strong doesn't want to go too fast, maybe for the risk of wearing himself out. He knows he's not 100%. So he has to try and work with that. Look at how strenuous it is for Strong to... He's pulling himself, essentially, up to that top rope. And he's going to fly here. Hits the elbow drop on Tommaso Ciampa. Turns over Ciampa and goes for a cover of his own. You're looking for the win in this one. Ciampa forcing him off in there at a relatively early uh, one count. Roddy Strong's been able to turn this match around a little bit more in his favour now, but Ciampa, big time chop in the face, there a slap even, can turn this match around again, Ro uh, Roddy, big punch in the face, and has him up your back, suplex, down into a face buster, and that could set up, well it won't right now to be fair, because he's going for the cover after, but it's a kick out, Roddy Strong could well be on his way to victory here, he's got him in position, He's looking for the end of heartache. Will he get it here on Ciampa? He will! End of heartache! And is that victory for Strong with one, two? It's not! Ciampa kicks out. And the match well and truly stays alive right about now. Ciampa looking for a big time win here over Roddy Strong. Imagine how much momentum this would give DIY upon their return. Able to beat one half of the number one contenders for the tag team titles in the corner now. Oh, oh God. Gargano again strung up in the tree of woe. After uh, Roddy was able to get out of the way of that one. That looked really painful there for Tommaso Ciampa. They've uh, hurt his leg significantly, all things considered. He's sent face first into the turnbuckle now. He's able to respond, and he rolls up strong here. Looking for the victory in the middle of the ring. There's one, there's two. Kick out, flips it over into a cover of his own now. Strong, countered back by Ciampa. There's one, there's two. And oh, it's countered back by Strong. There's one. Ciampa counters back again. Incredible back and forth, but Strong pushes him away at the one count there. Incredible. And uh-oh, backbreaker there. For Ciampa to have to endure once more. And Strong now showing some signs of fatigue in this one. 
Champa trying to crawl for a moment, trying to give himself some breathing space and just couldn't get it. But that big boot will certainly grant him some breathing room. Champa in position, looking for the armbar. He's got it stitched in. He floats over and look at how high that, that Fujiwara armbar is on Strong. Look at how tight he's got it locked in here. Will Roddy Strong submit? Is he going to be forced to tap out here? Will he? Won't he? Strong with nowhere to go. And the longer he's in this, the more damage it does. Strong gets his way out of it. Great counter as well to get himself out of that one. A little bit dazed are both men. But look at how Strong turns it around instantly. The face buster into the end of heartache maybe with no rest. No chance to catch his breath. End of heartache. The second one connects not long after the first. And I would be surprised if Ciampa fights on here. The cover. One, two, three. Roderick Strong is your winner. But did he have to fight to get that one? Well, there we go. It is victory for Strong. It is a great victory as well, all things considered. Not at 100%. Had to fight with everything within him for that one, but he got it. Roderick Strong is your winner in this one, and he can celebrate that for the Four Horsemen. A very strong, pun intended, victory there for Roddy, and he can have a smile about that one. Tommaso Ciampa, meanwhile, yet more dismay for him, really. Imagine a, a bit of disappointment still on the face of uh, Tommaso Ciampa as he awaits his tag team partner to return. But coming up next, we are in for a big one. Here we go, the new ECW television champion Bobby Roode's in action against Tetsuya Naito. Well, here we go. Let's pay attention to the arrival of the glorious one. How will the new ECW television champion look with the gold around his waist? I think we'll let his theme speak for him on that one. Look at that. The new champion. <clears throat> what a bout it was. A guilty as charged by these two men. All out. Everything put on the line to get that title. And it was Bobby Roode who did the almost <clears throat> unthinkable in some ways. And that's not disrespecting Roode. That's just saying that Alistair Black is very rarely defeated. And that was the case, heading into Guilty as Charged, but coming out of it, not to be. There is your new ECW television champion. There is the man who now holds the gold. That is the glorious one. The man who has joined Dean Ambrose in holding every single mid-card championship within this universe on the three major brands. Bobby Roode gets ready tonight to take on Tetsuya Naito in his debut match as television champion. No, he doesn't, because here comes the former champion. It's Alistair Black from behind. Little surprise that this was the case. Black could hardly wait to get his hands on, on Bobby Roode here. And here he goes now, beating into the glorious one right away. He took his title away from him. And Alistair Black is making sure that he realizes that business is not finished between these two men. Into the face with the belt goes Alistair Black now. And Bobby Roode has been stripped of his robe. Alistair Black has shown no remorse right from the get-go here. Double foot stomp from that far up. Alistair Black is set with one thing in mind, and that's making sure that Roode doesn't compete tonight. Here we go. Bobby Roode defenseless right now. Black Mass! Job done in the mind of Alistair Black. That is his job for the night. Well and truly finished. That is Bobby Roode out. That is the Wyatt family's warning. Well, there we go. The old champ giving the new champ his, his welcoming, I guess. It, it's not really that, is it? It is just a beat down at the grand scheme of things. It is Alistair Black showing that they have been through a war on both sides, but they aren't done yet. The 
former champ wants his gold back and new champ barely even had enough time to wrap it around his waist before Alistair Black made sure that that was put out there. If they want another war, I'm not going to say no. That match at Guilty's Charge was incredible. And you never know. It may happen at the Royal Rumble. It may happen sooner. But there will be another match between those two men. If that's how they want to go about it, there'll be another match. Don't worry. Don't panic. We'll make sure of it. But anyway, we're going to focus on our main event right now. Samoa Joe and Drew McIntyre one-on-one -on -one here. This one is going to be a good one. This one is going to be very, very entertaining indeed to watch. Two hard-hitting athletes. Two men who can bring the very best out of their opponents. And two men who are looking for the very the best success that they can imagine on ECW. Samoa Joe still trying to find that pinnacle of his career. This man might be on his way to it very, very soon. This man is Drew McIntyre. And as much as uh, as much as I thought it was going to be a, a decision that could backfire on me, it absolutely didn't at Guilty as Charged. One of the matches of the night, if not the match of the night, was McIntyre Callahan for the number one contendership. And it was McIntyre who walked out as the new number one contender for the ECW Championship. Just think about that. A few weeks ago, McIntyre was lingering around doing nothing on Monday Night Raw. And within two weeks of being on ECW, he already has a shot at the ECW Championship lined up for himself at the Royal Rumble. Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins will meet there. That is something that I absolutely cannot wait to see. And I don't think either can McIntyre. Amazingly, another man with a case of not at 100%. Himself and Callahan went off for nearly 20 minutes. They were beating lumps out of each other. Drew McIntyre, I think, got busted open in the process of that match, if I believe rightly. But he continued on. And he was and he walked out of it the winner. And he wanted to fight here tonight. And he wanted to fight the toughest. And he wanted to fight some of the best. And he's got it right now in Samoa Joe. This one is going to be a great, great matchup between these two men. This is one, though, that all things considered could be a 50-50 uh, a kind of match. Yeah, sure, Drew's the number one contender, but remember, Joe has been here on ECW a long time. Joe, in some ways, is a very staple guy in ECW. And he welcomes Drew McIntyre to this match with a respectable handshake there by both men. Very nice to see. And we are underway here. And oh, look at that. Drew McIntyre catching Joe off guard there early on. Joe came running at him. And McIntyre was the one who was able to... Oh, was able to pull it out the first time around. Second time, though, Joe knew what he was doing. And here we go, we are underway now for our main event of the evening. Look at this, Joe right away going ham, going ham into that turnbuckle. Thankfully for McIntyre's case, he finally counted it. But Joe knows right away, going for the head is going to do a lot of damage. Honing in on that skull is going to be his key to victory in this one. Locking in that Kakina clutch is going to be the very best thing that he could go for if he wants the win in this one. And McIntyre sending him to the outside early on there as he takes a moment to recover. He knows he's got to recover in all things considered. He knows he's not 100%, but he wanted this fight here, much the same as Roddy Strong. He wanted this fight because he wants to fight some of the best. And I think any kind of experience in his mind that he can get ahead of the Royal Rumble is something to... Uh, there's something he can take. Do you see the strength of him there, though? Hoisting Samoa Joe away like he was a cruiserweight. That was incredible to witness. Joe couldn't really replicate it with that reverse suplex there. Didn't really look the same. Drew McIntyre, I think, may be a new guy in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings when it comes to all-out strength. In the corner now is McIntyre, but a DDT will give him room to give himself an opening in this matchup once again. Up now on the shoulders with relative ease. Single knee gut buster there by McIntyre. What else could we see here from Drew? As well, we saw this a number of times against Callahan. 
hangs him up in the ropes, and then a reverse Alabama slam for Samoa Joe to endure there. Incredible move, and the pain that it must cause, because it's just a whiplash effect. Must be incredible. And McIntyre pulling something out of the book of Sammy Callahan. Callahan used that a number of times on McIntyre at guilty as charged, slamming into him with strikes. And McIntyre doing it here against Joe. Joe though with a big counter. Big time elbow in the face there. And McIntyre gonna be sent into the corner. Joe went coming in, it was coming in there for that corner in Zaguri. McIntyre denied it. Great bit of work there. And look at this now in the corner. McIntyre flurrying away with a hard amount of shots repeating them into Samoa Joe this is very very interesting right now this has been a a, a real hard hitting matchup right from the get go no breaks really just all out offense from both sides Joe he has the control right now in this one and all McIntyre feels as he gets sent careening over the top rope and to the outside here Oh my God, Joe up on the apron. This one could be dangerous. Joe gonna fly and he nails it. I'm not too sure what he hit there. Was it his arm, was it his knee? Whatever he did, he hit McIntyre with it. And the number one contender to the ECW Championship is gonna be feeling it big time. And it's Joe who is in total control on the outside right now, sending McIntyre back into the ring there. Almost sent his head right into the ring pole there. As McIntyre clutches his head in the ring right now, you know he's not at 100%. But I don't think McIntyre is going to be regretting his decision to not take part in this matchup. McIntyre backslide. Very well thought through there by McIntyre, but it's a kick out. Look at that, a stare off between the two men as they get back up to their feet. Drew with a lovely reversal there on. Samoa Joe and the strength of him here. Pile driver with ease. Drew McIntyre didn't look like he had to strain that hard to hit it. And here comes the strength of McIntyre once more. Up on the top rope. We saw this at Guilty as Charged. That, oh, a leaping chop essentially. Down onto uh, Samoa Joe this time around. And into the cover he goes. Only able to secure the one count there. Say what you will, both men have given quite a good amount of offense to each other in this main event thus far. Lovely counter there by Joe. And look at the strength here. Uranagi with relative ease by Samoa Joe now. What could we see? Following up from here, he's going to go after the head once more of McIntyre, knowing he's got to hone in on it. And Joe here, big time German suplex with a bridge to follow suit. Drew McIntyre forced his way out of the one count. Uh oh, Joe's in position. Joe's calling for it. Drew McIntyre wasn't aware until it was too late. Samoa Joe, Kakina clutch, Kakina clutch on McIntyre. Could this be a big time victory for Samoa Joe here? Can he force McIntyre to submit? Could Samoa Joe get his name right in the ECW Championship division? Oh, he had it locked in for a long time, but McIntyre forces his way out of it there. Great bit of work by McIntyre, and here he comes now. Drew McIntyre, future shock DDT, into the cover on Joe. One, two, not happening. Wow, that was a... Very hard hitting affair there. Both men looked like they had a chance of winning and then losing the matchup in the case of Samoa Joe, especially. And once more, Drew McIntyre is going to go up high here. Giving himself little time to recover following that Kakina clutch. Cover here by McIntyre, and Joe powers out of it again. This has been incredible, all things. Yeah, it has to be said, what a match this has been, what a main event. ECW can be proud of this one, I'm certainly proud of this one as the general manager of this brand. Watching these two fine athletes going all out for victory. There's two, and McIntyre with a kick out. Didn't look like it was the strongest kick out he could go for. I think the fatigue of this match may well have, been, may well have got to him by now. McIntyre with a counter, sweeps the leg there, and Joe goes down. 
What else could we see from... Oh, that's what we'll see from Drew. A big-time headbutt into the cover here on Joe. And if you know any better, you don't try and headbutt someone with Joe and think you can get a win from it. As well, indeed, Samoa Joe just let Drew McIntyre know. And Joe is going to take a moment here to go outside of the ring for a second. Recuperating, maybe. McIntyre going to allow that to happen as well. Great bit of respect by both men there. Kick in the gut by McIntyre, but he can't get anything going because Joe comes back with a flurry of strikes and another Yuranagi will send him down. It was a great little comeback there by Joe. Into the cover he goes here. McIntyre powers out of it. What a flip-flop in main event this has been. Both men have had their moments of control and both men have had their moments where they are on the back foot. Joe in position maybe now. He's going to go for the triple suplexes. McIntyre feels himself being flung around. First a German, then a dragon, and then a straight jacket. And then the bridge on McIntyre. There's one, and McIntyre powers out of it as early as one there. Gets out of the way and still giving himself an opening in this one. What could we see from Drew McIntyre right about now? A German suplex of his own. Bridge on Joe into the cover. Joe powers out of it early. Referee saying two. I don't know if he was even able to secure a two count. But all of a sudden, Drew McIntyre has got a flurry of offense going for him right now. And McIntyre has him up on his shoulders here. Runs him down. And this could be a great opening for McIntyre now. In the corner goes Drew. The very move that won him the number one contendership. The Claymore kick is countered by Joe. Joe evades it. Joe moved out of the way of that one. Drew McIntyre had victory just a second away there and Samoa Joe denied it and Joe has him up in the turnbuckle oh my god Samoa Joe muscle buster Samoa Joe with a muscle buster on McIntyre could this be a huge upset on the night could it be victory for Samoa Joe the cover one two Samoa Joe has beaten Drew McIntyre. What a win. What a win. Because that is, I think, what can be said the most from that one. What a win for Samoa Joe. That, that just changed it all up. The number one contender defeated by Samoa Joe. Now where do we go from here? Now what does this mean for Samoa Joe? He knew Drew McIntyre wasn't 100%. He knew he had to go in with a mindset of trying to get victory. He did just that, and it, pie, and it pie, eh, panned out perfectly for him. Samoa Joe, your winner, Seth Rollins. I know you're at home right now recovering, but take note, man. This guy could have just got his name right in our business. And we'll see what you want to do about that next week. But there we have it. Victory for Joe in this main event. McIntyre will of course remain the number one contender we may have two contenders going after one champion we'll see tune in next week to ECW to find out what will happen in regards to that but that'll end this episode of Universe for now thank you guys for watching take care guys and ta -ra.